HubSpot is changing its pricing model. And if you are a current HubSpot user or you plan on starting to use HubSpot in the future, this is something that you need to be aware of. I'm here to give you a very brief overview and make sense of it, and then provide some commentary on what I think about all of this. Now, if you don't know me or us, my name is CJ Maurer. I'm the founder of The Gist. where We are an inbound marketing agency and certified HubSpot solutions partner based right here in Buffalo, New York. Now, this was just announced. Uh, this is a pricing increase that is set to take effect on March 5th of this year, 2024. It will not affect current customers on current subscriptions, but obviously with at the time of this recording, March 5th being only about five weeks away, this is going to start to impact people very, very soon. So what is changing? Very simply, free seats are diminishing. They're not completely going away, but they're diminishing significantly. So if you know anything about HubSpot pricing, you know that there are five main hubs, marketing hub, sales hub, service hub, CMS hub, and operations hub. And each of those hubs has a different level of subscription, starter, professional, and enterprise, right? Different monthly costs based on which hub at which level. But they're all built on top of a free CRM, right? The basic data organization and structure of your CRM is free. And there are forever free subscriptions. Those are not going away either. Now, with all of those hubs, there are some variable pricing, specifically in sales and service hub. So if you buy sales hub or you buy service hub, they come with a base price. And those include a, a specific amount, usually five paid seats. Now, a paid seat and a free seat, obviously, are different things. A paid seat is allowed to access productivity tools to help them be much more effective and much more efficient. We're talking email templates, automated sequences, snippets, conversation routing, meeting booking links, right? These are seats that you give to the members of your team that are typically conducting a high volume of customer or prospect outreach. At the same time, though, you could have unlimited free seats traditionally, right? Your marketing managers, your, C your CROs, your CEOs, your CRM admins, you could literally have as many free seats as you want and assign all of the core permissions to them, right? They can um, import and export. They can add records, edit records, communicate with people, do pretty much everything there is to do within the CRM aside from accessing those productivity tools that are really, really vital for reps that conduct a lot of prospect and customer facing activity. The long and short of it is that's kind of going away. Now, every subscription will have a base number of free seats, but a maximum cap number depending on your subscription. And now to be able to go into the CRM and add records, edit records, communicate with records, you have to purchase what is now being called a core seat. So it's still different from a paid sales or service hub seat that you wanna to give to your reps for their outreach and productivity, um, but it is inherently a brand new seat. And these seats are going to, you, you will be able to customize them, but what they essentially allow members of your team to do who occupy those seats is do most of the core CRM functionality. Um, what you will also get are read-only seats, and these are free and unlimited. So when you have a CEO or a member of the executive leadership team that needs to be able to access reports and see what's going on, but let's be honest, they never actually do anything in the CRM, great, give them a free read-only seat. So obviously this is going to impact pricing because I can think of clients off the top of my head where they have marketing reps or even other people on their sales and service team who use the tools, like maybe use deal pipelines and ticket pipelines, but don't really conduct a whole bunch of outward facing communication to warrant a paid seat. So they've just been getting away just fine on free seats. But if they have to update deals and leave notes and records and email people, you will need to now purchase a seat for them. And that's not an expense that you have been used to paying. So for some customers, this is going to be 
anywhere from a marginal to a significant increase in what you're paying in HubSpot. Now, on the other side of things, um, HubSpot has reduced the barriers to entry for a lot of its subscriptions. For example, the CRM starter bundle is cheaper than it's ever been before. The CRM professional level bundle, the next one up, as well as the enterprise, they're all a little bit cheaper than they are before. These baseline subscriptions come out of the box with certain amounts of core CRM seats as well as sales and service seats. And the core CRM seats are much less expensive than the sales and service seats. So in the end, we're not looking at anything like doubling or tripling the pricing or, or anything close to that. And I think when all is said and done, when you consider some of the lower barriers to entry, I don't think it's going to necessarily represent um, significant price increases off the board. In fact, there may be customers that actually save money uh, with their HubSpot subscription. Now, this is just conjecture, speculation. A lot of that remains to be seen, right? This news was just announced and we haven't really had time to pull up a pricing calculator and make some comparisons. But as somebody who's lived in HubSpot every day for eight years, um, this is what I can tell you, I, I think is, is likely going to happen. Um, why is HubSpot doing this, by the way? Uh, they, they were nice enough to provide a little bit of information to us partners uh, shortly in advance of the announcement. One of the things that they mentioned is that um, they want their pricing to be more tied to value, specifically up market, right? So for lack of a better term, they've, they've noticed that they've been leaving money on the table and that as they have continued to add more features and functionality to the product, um, they haven't been able to monetize it in ways that they think are consistent with the value that's being provided. Um, and also, right, um, HubSpot is now more designed to scale as your team and the people that use it and therefore the value you get from it scales. The good news is for smaller businesses, you know, and I'm not just talking startups, I mean, probably under 100 employees, the barrier to entry is going to be lower. It will be easier and cheaper to access more features out of the gate, um, especially if your team is small. So again, I want to stress that there is a lot of positive from this as well. As far as how I feel about it overall, I think I'm mostly neutral to it, although I am leaning towards being on the positive side about it. I will admit, as a HubSpot Solutions partner, I have loved having conversations with my clients and letting them know that they can have unlimited free seats. So their marketing coordinators and their sales and service admins who are kind of supporting those outward facing teams, they don't have to pay for their seats, right? They're getting functionality out of the box and as many people can come in and be admins, work deals, work tickets, create content, do whatever they want to do. Um, again, that's unfortunately not going to be the case now, but when you consider some of the reductions in cost and the lower barriers to entry and still the ability to retain free view only seats. I don't think the change is going to be very seismic, but I will set the expectation that as your team grows and scales and more and more people are going to be using HubSpot, what you pay to HubSpot will likely scale alongside with it. Maybe not directly proportional, uh, but certainly more than it has been up to this point. Um, as I mentioned before, we work with dozens of companies, primarily in the B2B space and specifically in the HR industry, although we work with a lot um, in, in, across the board in B2B industries, we're constantly helping people get migrate to HubSpot, um, adopt a CRM for the first time, or come in and get the most value out of HubSpot if you've had it for a couple of years and you know, you know, we really just haven't been getting the value out of this that we know we can. That's what we do. And we have some other like marketing, inbound marketing and sales enablement services on top of that. But, you know, optimizing and evangelizing your CRM is, is one of our core services. So um, we're, we're constantly having conversations with, with customers and partners and prospects about this. So if you have any questions, if you want to test some use cases, maybe you want to figure out 
what this means for you when your renewal is coming up, uh, please reach out. Um, I will offer some some times to schedule a, a meeting on my calendar and would love to walk you through uh, the the pricing increase or the price change, price model change in more detail and answer any questions that you may have. Thanks.